Welcome to Cape Breton Movers and Shakers, where we have conversations with people who are doing positive things here in Cape Breton Island. I'm Richard Larway, president of GoCapeBreton.com, and I'm talking with Heather Austin Colomb, uh, co-owner of the Farmer's Daughters Country Market in Wicagama, Cape Breton. Welcome, Heather. Welcome. Thank you. So, so my understanding is that this the business was started, you know, approximately 30 years ago by your parents. Is that correct? And they were they were farmers. They were they were dairy farmers. We had we had a large dairy farm in Sky Glen. And uh, yeah, so they started the market because there was uncertainty time uncertain times in the dairy industry with um, milk marketing board and commodities and free trade. Um, so they were. I was the oldest of five kids. So back in 1992, I was in grade 12, and so they were worried. They were worried about. The future of their family so they decided to diversify so their first um thing was to open a farm stand like so the original drawing was just um two garage doors in the side of in a, in a small in a garage you know that they would just slide open the doors and have fresh fruits and vegetables there that people could buy and as they started talking and drawing the drawings um diversified and made it uh, and then we picked a different spot we got the crazy idea to fill in that big hole with i forget how many thousands of load, like over a thousand loads of gravel i think and fill next to vi's restaurant gotcha. it was, we filled that hole in and uh started building that the farmer's daughter which i named <laughs> oh uh, yeah you being the farmer's daughter me, yeah, me being the first one too. There's first. four farmer's daughters and one mm -hmm. farmer's son. Um, so we, uh, so we did that, and then my grandmother, who's from North Sydney, is was a, a a great baker, and she used to love baking and doing candy chocolate making classes, and she was really known for um, doing wedding cakes as well. Decided she said she would like to put baking in the store. So we decided to put a little bakery in the corner um, using, so we could recreate some of her recipes. But when the store first opened, she was making stuff at her cottage in Blues Mills and bringing it over until we got the bakery going. So we just sold fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables. We had an ice machine and we'd fill everything up with ice every day and put the vegetables and fruits and that were, we could get locally on the, on the ice. And that's how we started. <laughs> Excellent. We, so, had one, we had one coffee machine if people want a coffee and we had um, a woodworker I forget his name now that he used to make some woodworking we had in one corner of the store <laughs> so he could sell his his woodworking and um, eventually we decided to add a greenhouse onto it and um, the bakery was taking off so we added a space onto it, made the bakery bigger. Yes, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, uh, and it grew from there. And it grew from there. Yeah. And um, it did. And like my parents kept adding on. We eventually converted the greenhouse and built over it. So if you're ever in our store, you'll notice that the floor is still is still the. Uh, base of our greenhouse with the cement tiles and the wood in between it so it can get cold in the winter because it's just on top of the gravel gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and you'll still see the top of the greenhouse rafters because we kind of just built over because <laughs> we started using the greenhouse as part of the gift putting gifts in there in the off season and had some heat blower heaters in there and then we decided to just build up and then we built another spot onto it which was a garden center and then eventually that's now clothing it was christmas for a while but we moved christmas upstairs and then we built another little greenhouse on which is now storage <laughs> so um yeah, and there's still room for us to grow we still so, have lots of ideas and, <laughs> and so did you and all your siblings you all worked in there i presume my brother did, i didn't because i well i do now but i was i it opened right when i left for university so gotcha. i graduated 92 it opened that fall but I did periodically sometimes come home and 
work for a month here, a month there, you know? Yeah. So when my kids were three, I worked there for a year. Um, cause my husband was, my husband's in the military was deployed. Right. Quite a bit that year. So I came home and worked for a year and then, um, uh, I decided to come home. My brother and his, and his spouse at the time ran up for a few years. And then I decided to come home from British Columbia five years ago now. Right. Right. To run that. So, yeah. So, so do you work with other local vendors or do you supply all the produce yourself? No, no, we don't. We get, we, we buy from the food hub. We get some of our supplies in the food uh, hub. Some, okay. we, some, we get a lot from Ikings ourselves and okay. um, Eddie Randall and Fedor, uh, Sky Glen Creamery. We get their milk and cheese, no eat dark cheese from Andy Ganesh, Har Harvey Acres, maple syrup from Andy Ganesh. Like we try to get as, like, as much local as we can, like Wiles, Wiles Honey, which is a big seller for us. So, yeah. Um, and we try to do as much Nova Scotia, stick as much Nova Scotia as we can. Right. So, okay. and that's one thing we try to do at Christmas. We do a big, huge Christmas gift basket box um, business at Christmas. You know, we have a big, I have a person that does a, a orders about 200 boxes from us every year from Halifax. Wow that we do and uh, which we've gotten many spin off from people who get their stuff that order from us too. And we, the last two years we've done it completely with Nova Scotia product, which is nice. Yeah, so are you, you know, it seems to me that there's there's been a resurgence in um, the local agricultural ecosystem, like sourcing more food locally. Are, are you seeing that as well? There is, and it, um, there is a lot more, uh, Homesteading farms, I would call them, I guess. Okay. I'm seeing um, start, especially around our area, written around the Mabu area and Bador. And there's more and more popping up every year. And it's, it's, and it's young families too, moving home. Right. Um, no, actually not even moving home, they're moving from other parts of Canada because they've heard the lifestyle here in Cape Breton is, is good. And I think that's amazing. Um, I'm, you know, I look at it and I try to promote it as much as I can. And I said this in interviews before that we can kind of become the Okanagan of the East, Eastern, of the East coast gotcha. with, um, people coming to visit all these local farms and getting all this fresh local produce and fruit and want, we have some wineries and now all the craft breweries right. and cideries opening up, you know. Sorry, you say there's wineries in, in the Sky Valley? Or? And there's there's a there's a winery in Marble Mountain. Oh yes, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we could use more of those because with the Yeah. You know, I think that it's a benefit of having more of those. It's in my dream to to to, to I know my brother is looking at uh, he's starting up a cidery too and I wouldn't mind I'm trying to grow grapes so maybe I could do some wine. <laughs> because we can only benefit from each other you know people yes. come to Cape Breton they can jump farm to farm cidery the brewery to winery you know it, it makes it a destination for people um you know and more people are more concerned of how their food is produced now right. so uh, there's a huge market there right so how many employees do you have now uh we have about 30 Four, thirty-five, right now. Okay, wow. So you you must be the one of the largest employers in Wicomico. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I know that you you certainly um, got a lot of publicity a couple of years back when you were recruiting, and it was your part of your recruiting campaign was to offer land. Well, it was yeah. We uh, it was kind of we were in desperate need. <laughs> we were that summer. We were pretty much employed mostly with students. Right. Go to the school in the fall and. Cape Breton is busy right up to Celtic Colors. So we were really stressing like what were we going to do? And uh, and we decided to, um, we started putting Kijiji ads all across the country, trying to see if we could get, um, get some people to move here, but no one was biting. <laughs> and we, my sister and I at the time, we decided we just have to show people how great it is here in Cape Breton, but how could we do that? How could we 
what could we do unique? And my sister actually went for a hike um, up behind her house in Storedale, where we have a couple of hundred acres that my grandfather acquired many, many years ago. And it's mostly woodland on top of a mountain. And she came back, I know what we can do. We have all this land, Heather, and we really can't do anything with it. <laughs> you know, we could, we could lumber it, but it wasn't, we're not into clear cutting or lumbering and all that. And uh, she said, we could give them free land. And I was there, well, we got to talk to mom and dad about this first. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so they, uh, dad was there, but it's our land. And I said, well, what are you going to do with dad? Well, I don't know. I'll figure something out to do. <laughs> and I said, well, why don't we offer to give it away? And he was there, okay, but I don't think it will work. And we didn't think it would work either. We uh, posted the ad on a Sunday night. And this, this was in 2016, because all these memories, it was right, right around now, because all my memories are coming up on my phone right now. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, we posted at 11 o'clock and we shared it, her and I. And I said, maybe we should do a Facebook, you know, he promoted on Facebook and pay so much to advertise yeah. it. And she said, well, let's wait to see what happens. And we figured, hopefully, we were hoping for maybe 100 people to apply. And the next morning, we got up, and I think there had already been, I don't know how many views, because when you have a business, you can see how many views. And they're, wow. And then someone, we were being tagged on radio stations in Halifax. And we, we went to there, and they, they were asking, would you go move to Cape Breton? You know to work at the farmer's daughter and there was like jokes like no i moved to cape breton to live with the farmer's daughter oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Or stuff like that you know joke. Yeah. yeah and i was there wow like we're on the radio and then all of a sudden we were getting calls from news people and it was funny i i posted like i think the day the day after how we i had three thousand emails sitting in the account oh my lord and that I thought that was amazing, but still today I'm sitting with forty thousand on red emails. <laughs> so, I mean, like how, how did I you did. manage that? How did you manage all those? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Didn't. And that I guess and that is, you know, when you look back at it now, I wish I had. You know, Cape Iron Partners did, did jump in, and yeah. and tried to help, but it was kind of beyond their scope at that time too. They kept giving me people to try to go through the emails but you know we in the end we probably between facebook and emails there's probably an account now about four hundred thousand. Oh my lord so and they're still coming every day we still get there's some robots out there that send us and we know how to pick those out now yeah, yeah. Uh, i leak those every day just to get them out of there because they have the same title line but we probably get three or four um inquiries like legitimate inquiries still a day right back from that inquiry but uh and we still pull from there we still pull. So did, did it solve your media business problem did you did you find well, it, it, it did we hired three people right away but then we ran into the problem of housing <laughs> right so which was something we never thought of so we really really scrambled to find places to live for people to live because yes we were offering free land and some but it wasn't and it was off the grid, which we were very, very um, frank about. Yeah. And that was one reason why it, it kind of went viral is because off the grid living picked it up uh. and they shared it. And the same once they shared it, I was in, in Ontario the day that they picked it up. And uh, my daughter is a good hockey player. And she, we were, I was, she was still in BC, but she was playing um, hockey and, Ontario that weekend so I decided to meet her I, I flew there to meet her and um, she I was I was just in between games and all of a sudden my phone just started going beep 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 and I was just watching the number go up or up and I think it went from 3,000 to 22,000 that day wow of emails of emails yeah and everyone was there like your phone's got to be broken I go, it's not and then you know George Takai and, and Alice Cooper and things like people started sharing it and and then people then my sister other sister jokes so i wonder when the tv producers are going to um you know the reality shows are going to start and we got 11 producers contact us <laughs> okay 
and the pitch had, reality shows. Yeah, there was, and there was one company um, from from London, England, that they wanted to, through NBC. They had an affiliation with the BBC and NBC wanted to us to stop our recruitment right then and there, and they were going to take it over and rerun the ad, but we were there. Um, <laughs> no, because what is that? What who they're going to hire? Jokes and. You know, they might hire one or two, but most people are going to be people that cause conflict, and that's not something no, no. we want. And uh, so this is where I wish that we had had maybe the province or someone else pop in, because we it was way over our spectrum. Yeah. You know, and we only had so much money, and um, that we had help because you know we had. The Stephen Colbert show contacted us, but somehow I guess they didn't like what I, they said they would call us back, but I probably didn't handle it maybe the best, I don't know. We did sign with a New York TV producer, the producer that does um, Alaska, The Last Frontier. Right. And, uh, but we waited, it took a long time because we were wanting to be co-producers, like have creative rights on it because it was a lot of pressure on us because. I didn't know, I didn't want to be the, the, the people that brought a TV show to Cape Breton and what, if, were they going to make us look like jokes, you know, yeah. I wanted yeah. final say and what got aired. And so eventually we did get that worked into the contract. And with, we did have, there was one entertainment lawyer in Cape Breton, in Nova Scotia that we had helped us, but then she, it was out of her league too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I kind of used to be in that business. So I, I do understand. It's, I know, but I just, it was a lot complex. on our shoulders. It was a lot on our shoulders to, because I was just yeah, worried. Well, I want people to say, oh, they're people that make, they make Cape Bretoners look like. Yeah, you, know? you, you have to live here, they don't, right? Yeah, and they could leave. So in the end, we had lots of people, like there was lots of Discovery Channel and TLC were interested, but they did not like that we, we had worked in creative rights. Gotcha. That we, so it never happened, which I think in the end, if we had had help, it could have been amazing for Cape Breton. It could have been amazing for our business, but. Uh, <laughs> it would have, you know, it, their agenda would have become, your, your agenda would have been changed considerably. Yeah, I just wish I had had a little bit of help, you know. Yeah. Like, this is all hindsight. Once things have slowed down and you're thinking, yeah. we were, news was, we were on so many different news. Vice News came from. Yep. from the states and spent three or four days with us and did an amazing amazing set on us that know? was a good piece yeah it was a good piece and then the new york times came and they were only going to spend three or four days with us but then they found he ended up spending a month here that reporter because he just loved cape breton you know and he said it's one of the most beautiful places he's ever been right <laughs> you know and he did all kinds of pieces on cape breton but he first came to be just with us right yeah yeah and uh you know, and that was funny because he called and he asked, "Want to be a good time to come?" I said, "Well, it's really beautiful in Cape Breton now. Celtic Colors is happening next week. It's Thanksgiving. This is the perfect time." Of course, there wasn't many places to stay then, but um, he uh, ended up coming. I said, "Well, I'll try. I'll come up this weekend." <laughs> and then I, he, he, he found a place, but we invited him for Thanksgiving dinner. He says, "Seriously, really?" And I go, "Yeah." <laughs> you know and he, he said well no one's ever done that to me before so that's what we do in Cape Breton yeah yeah and we had a nice Cape Breton dinner and Thanksgiving and he just loved Cape Breton ended up staying a whole month here in the in nice, Cape nice. Island. he did pieces with Ashton and Kaisik afterwards and yeah so, and so the, <laughs> I just want to switch to the you know the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh, you, you dependent upon tourism for a good chunk of your business like Traffic. A, good chunk, a good chunk, but we also, we are a destination. We have people right. that come all the way from, we have a family that comes from Enfield every Christmas, although this year they couldn't come and they were so sad because of the lockdown in Halifax and Enfield area right. that they make it there. That's a Christmas tradition to come pick out a Christmas tree at our place, have lunch, buy a couple of Christmas presents and they do it. They've been doing it every year wow. for the last I think, six, seven years. So we have people come from New Glasgow and Antigonish for day trips, Sydney day trips, you know, because they can come and they can have a lunch. They can buy some groceries, like our frozen foods are 
you know, our turkey pies and our fish cakes and my grandma hair's beans, you know, all frozen and they can shop in the gift barn. Like it's a destination. Right. So, then, you know, you know, so I, I do a lot of promoting on Facebook and stuff in that, like from here to new Glasgow, just giving people a reminder, Hey, we're here looking what to do today. Why don't you come visit us? Right. And so we get a, a lot of customers that way. And, you know, even now in January and February, we're, we used to be just barely make it. Um, yeah. But we, we used to close, but then we found we were losing as some other businesses open up. We at risk of losing customers right. to other businesses. So we stay open and, you know, but now oh. things, things are picking up because people, like we do a big sale every January. So people hold off and wait and come shop at our place in January and try to keep promotions and sales February, March. So we're getting... So I wouldn't say we still have, we have, we have a really good local, local clientele that's very loyal to us, but we also have, I say all the way to New Glasgow, like an hour, an hour and a half away, two hours away. That will make us a day trip, but we do it, the summers or tourism, you know, um, quite a bit of tourism. So, okay. yeah. So do you, do you ever see yourself opening another location or are you going to expand at that location? We looked at doing we looked to put it on location once in Sydney um but be, it, it's hard because you want to kind of keep the look and feel of what we have right um you know which is cozy and you know um but then we worry about um you know like I've looked at going to the deck, you know, in Kingston Landing close there. I thought, oh, maybe that yeah. could be a place for another farmer's daughter. But I thought it would take away from this store, you know. Right. So, okay. and I have some workers that have been with me, you know, 18 years. And because we are so rural, it just it worries me if I was to put another location someplace that it would take away from our location in Wicogama, which, you know, I think is a lot of spinoff effects to Wicogama. You know, I think people sometimes decide to come camp or fish or skidoo because they can go to the farmer's daughter, which has, you know, spin-off effects to the rest of our community. Okay, fair enough. So um, here's the, the a question that I'm, I've been asking people, you know, business people who have done some things and it's, if you had a piece of advice for somebody who was looking to start a business in rural Cape Breton or to start a farm in rural Cape Breton, what would it be? I think there's a huge opportunity here. Like I mentioned before, um, you know, become the Okanagan of the East of the East Coast. You know, ecotourism. You know, I think ecotourism is huge. And as more people are wanting to do farm to table, you see a lot more restaurants popping up that are using local produce. Right. Farm to table, and um, you know, there's one down in Marguerite. There's Gra, there's what's the other one there? The Cantrell Inn in North River. Yeah, like there's a there, White there's House. A White House, that's someone. Yeah, like they're all and they're doing extremely well. So there is the opportunity there. Um, I guess my only thing, because I do buy from local as much as I can, is that um, presentation and cleaning your vegetables. You know, if you can do that, right? <laughs> that that is huge and and invest in some good packaging and displaying, you know, um, yeah. and do a little bit of homework um, on keeping your vegetables fresh and, and picking sometimes the way I get it, I don't get stuff very fresh and it's limp and, you know, um, you just don't, you just can't come and do it. Yeah. You need to do your research and you need to, to ask, you know, um, find out how to get this organic produce and vegetable to the to to these restaurants and and stores like mine so. okay doke well um thanks for your time today heather it's been great talking to you thank you for the opportunity i've been speaking with heather austin colomb co-owner of the farmer's daughter country market in wicogama cape breton and we'll see you next time on cape breton movers and shakers